Hey, what's up guys? Look, check it out. I finally upgraded the monitor that I had for like five years. So I got a new one. This is from LG. They actually sent me this monitor. So thank you, LG. And the model is the 27UK850. It's a 27 inch 4K monitor. And it has some pretty cool features that we're gonna talk about today. So it's gonna be like a review. It's not sponsored, but they did give it to me for free. So full disclosure. So why don't we just jump right in, starting off with what I guess would be the most important part, of course, the panel specs. Now, like I said, this is an IPS monitor. You're gonna get great colors with that, great contrast. It has a matte finish, which I prefer strongly over glossy, so you don't get any reflections or anything. And also, interestingly, this is 10-bit HDR. We will talk about that, but it is a big feature here. And as for resolution, yes, it is indeed 4K. Actually never had a 4K monitor before, had 4K TVs, so this is a new thing for me. The refresh rate is 60 hertz. It's a bit of a shame they didn't bump it up to like 75 or something. You know I'm a big fan of high refresh rates, but let's be real here. If you're playing on high quality settings, which if you're buying a 4K monitor, let's be honest, you're gonna be wanting to play on high settings, you're probably not gonna get much above 60 hertz anyway, and they clearly were going for graphics intensive features on this monitor, not necessarily something you're gonna be using for a competitive Counter-Strike or anything like that. So, not complaining, it is what it is. It also gets really bright. It's got average at 350 nits, and it can peak at 450, very bright. And the color space coverage is also really good. It's got basically full coverage sRGB. I measured it myself with my colorimeter, and it uh, is 99.4% sRGB color space coverage. That's really good if you're gonna be editing or even viewing any web content, sRGB is pretty much the standard. If you're wondering where that 0.6% went, well, there's a little tiny hair off in the red side of the spectrum, but it doesn't really matter because our eyes are not really sensitive to red anyway. It's more important about the green, which it is actually larger than the color space in that area. So all that considered, it definitely does look really good right out of the box. And it also has some other picture settings you can choose like photo mode, uh, cinema mode, even has some game specific settings. They got a lot of gaming features in here we can talk about. And also an even an HDR effect feature, which is like a picture mode where it takes standard content and kind of makes it look like it's HDR. I don't know if I would use that, but you might like it a lot for movies or something. All right, so let's move on to the hardware, starting off with the inputs in the back. You got one DisplayPort 1.2 input. That's my personal favorite. You also have two HDMI 2.0 inputs. And here's the interesting one, a USB Type-C input. Now you can do a couple things with this. You can use it as a input for USB and then use the other USB-A connectors on the back as like a hub or you can use the USB Type-C input in the alternative mode for DisplayPort, which means that you can actually use DisplayPort over USB Type-C if your computer does support that. Now, I'm not gonna get into USB Type-C and the alternative modes and everything like that. I did actually make another video, you can click here, it'll pop out, talking all about USB Type-C because it is a bit complicated. But all you really do need to know is if your computer does support DisplayPort output from USB Type-C, you can use it there or just USB as like a hub. Now, as for the design, big fan of how this monitor looks. It's got a thin bezel, obviously, really nice. And the curved base also looks pretty cool. As for the stand, it's like a cylindrical thing and you slide it up and down. I like the way that works. And then you can tilt it as well. For controls, there's actually just one little control joystick on the bottom. So it goes four different ways and you can click it in and that does all the controlling with the on-screen display. And also on the bottom are the speakers. Now, normally I would just completely ignore speakers on a monitor, but in the past people have asked and no surprise, like all monitor speakers, they're not that great. So I don't know if any of you actually care about monitor speakers, I don't think you should. Just get a dedicated pair of speakers and be done with it. All right, so that is all the hardware. Now we can get to the good stuff, the features and what the screen actually looks like, of course, when using it. So we can start off with some of the gaming features. This is kind of a big thing they're focusing on. Not 100%, but it is a thing they definitely put some time into. So you got a few interesting features, such as FreeSync. If you're not familiar with that, there's G-Sync and FreeSync. G-Sync is like NVIDIA, FreeSync is AMD. And that basically just removes all screen tearing. It makes the screen look a lot smoother when gaming. Big deal. I can't personally try it out because I have NVIDIA cards, but I have seen it in other monitors and it does look good. It's a very good feature if you're able to take advantage of it. Of course, when it comes to gaming, input lag and response time are very important, and I'm glad to say that this monitor does perform pretty well in that aspect. It's got a few different response time modes. 
So this is basically known as overdrive in other monitors if you want to look that up. But there's a few different settings. So there's off, normal, fast, and faster. I don't really have time to get into the details of how this feature works, but I usually just keep it on fast. It's kind of like the best of both worlds. If you keep it off, you're gonna get a lot of motion blur and ghosting from the monitor. This feature helps reduce that. And if you set it really high, you will get better response time, but it might introduce some artifacts. Now, when I'm gaming, that doesn't bother me at all. So you might put it on faster when gaming and just fast for everything else. As for the response time, they say it's about five milliseconds gray to gray when you're in that faster response time mode, which is pretty good. I mean, on a 60 Hertz monitor, that refresh rate alone is gonna cause about 16.7 milliseconds of latency. So five milliseconds, you theoretically wouldn't even notice it at all. Another feature I really like is black stabilizer. This is really good in like FPS games where you need an edge for seeing enemies or something like that basically just raises the black level, so it's easier to see in the dark, kind of. It probably isn't something that's really necessary in like an RPG or something like that, but I usually just keep it on max when I'm playing a game. You're also gonna get a bunch of different presets, so if you go into the game mode, just right through the main menu, you can actually see there's a couple of them. There's FPS 1, FPS 2, RTS, and then a custom one, and these are just gonna vary some of the little settings we just talked about, and probably just gonna come down to preference. It's nice that they have these at least. All right, moving on, let's talk about one of my favorite features in any display, TV or computer monitor, HDR, high dynamic range, and along with 10-bit colors. If you're not really familiar with HDR, it basically just allows the video source to much better distinguish between different levels of brightness when it's going to output on the display, and this has a lot of advantages. It basically makes the brights brighter and the darks darker. So for example, if I'm playing a game and you look at the sun in the game, it'll actually look bright enough to be like an actual light source as opposed to just a brighter part of the screen. It just really increases the realisticness of the scene because the ground is gonna actually look pretty dark and not be affected by that small area which is really bright and it'll just look more realistic in general. Also supporting HDR10, which means it has 10-bit color, like I said, along with HDR, that means you're gonna get a much larger color gamut, meaning that the brighter parts are not gonna be washed out. So if you're looking at the sun, if you're looking on a regular, mo regular monitor, it might look white, whereas this will look really bright and yellow. So nicely saturated colors, not washed out just from being bright. Now, one important thing to know though, is that using HDR with Windows is a bit tricky. It's kind of hard to get right at first. And that's because you don't really want to enable HDR at all times. If you do, then it'll make the whole screen and desktop environment look pretty dark. And that's because when you're using HDR, it's gonna be a completely different range of colors as reference. So what is normal brightness on a standard definition monitor is probably gonna be a lot lower on HDR because the highest is much brighter, so it's gonna look darker. So you don't really wanna enable the setting in Windows that says HDR and advanced color. You can if you want, but just be aware if you do that, it's not gonna look right. But that doesn't mean you can't use HDR and everything else because if you launch something that does support HDR, it should theoretically automatically switch it over. So if you're playing a full screen game and that game does support HDR and you enable that setting, then in this monitor at least, it'll pop up a thing that says HDR. So it automatically switch, it automatically said, all right, this game wants to do HDR and you don't have to mess with it. So if you do see that setting in Windows, I just wouldn't even mess with it. Hopefully that isn't too confusing, but the basic version is that you don't really have to do anything to enable HDR in Windows. In fact, you don't want to enable it in Windows, but when you do launch an application or a game, especially in full screen that supports HDR and you have it enabled in that application, it should automatically switch on and put the monitor into HDR mode. All right, so why don't we move on to some other features like with the on-screen display. In here, you're gonna notice a lot of different settings you can customize, more than what anyone would really need, but it's all there. So for example, even when you're doing color adjustment, you can do up to six axis color correction, meaning that you can adjust red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow. I mean, I don't know what madman would ever need to adjust all that with that kind of detail, but 
it's there if you want to. So the on-screen display is really easy to navigate and there's actually a quick gaming mode. So when you move the joystick down, it'll bring that up and switch to game mode. And then it'll show you some quick access to picture profiles like that FPS 1 and 2, RTS and custom game modes that I mentioned before. So if you are looking to launch a game, there's no problem there. Again, they definitely put some time into the gaming features and that is a focus on here. Now, one strange thing though is while there is that quick access to the game profiles, there's not really a quick way to go back. So it's kind of like a one-way street. If you switch to a picture profile by clicking that game mode, then if you want to go back to like regular desktop colors that you customized before, you have to go all the way through the regular settings and find that profile again. So hopefully they add some sort of feature that lets you customize which profile shows up there, and then it'll be easy to go back and forth if you want. All right, so finally, why don't we go over what's really important, what it's like using the monitor, the experience, playing games and all that, what it looks like, and then afterwards we can answer some questions that you guys asked. Obviously, being 4K, this thing looks amazing. It's really sharp. I was not really expecting it to look that much different from 1440p that I was using before, but it does look significantly better, and obviously way better than 1080p, being four times the resolution. Then along with the sharpness, it does look really bright and vivid, look great colors, especially in HDR mode, that's kind of the point, and it has great contrast as well. That's thanks to being IPS, which is basically like the best kind of monitor panel you can get, maybe with the exception of OLED, but that's really only in TVs. You can't really buy OLED monitors, so this is kind of like the best kind you can get. And again, playing games in HDR especially is really something else. It looks really amazing for the reasons I said before with the bright things looking really like light sources. It's very realistic looking, and it is kind of shocking. You're like, whoa, this is pretty awesome, especially in 4K. I had played HDR games before, but they were only on console, so it is really nice to play on PC. Unfortunately, not all games might support HDR. A lot of the newer ones might. For example, Battlefield, I was trying that out, and that does look really good with it. All right, now finally, a couple of you guys had some questions you wanted me to address in the review, so let me read those. Someone said, I've always wondered if buying one of these to watch 4K YouTube videos will really make me amazed. Is it worth the expense? Uh, for watching YouTube videos specifically, I don't really know if that would make sense. Definitely not if you're only gonna be watching 4K YouTube videos. If you're gonna be watching like Blu-ray movies or 4K movies and stuff, especially with HDR, it probably would be worth it if you were looking to upgrade anyway. But the thing to remember about YouTube is the quality of a 4K video is not always necessarily the same. It heavily depends on what camera was recording it. On YouTube, you're not really recording stuff with $100,000 movie cameras, so you might not be amazed at the difference. It'll definitely look way better, but it might not be a huge difference over even 1080p, especially with the compression you get on any streamed web video. So to answer your question, I probably wouldn't say that it's worth it to upgrade to 4K and HDR and spend that much money just to watch YouTube videos in 4K. If you're gonna be doing everything else like movies, video games, and your computer can actually support running on high settings in 4K, probably is worth it if you game a lot. All right, and the other question, someone wanted me to cover the gaming aspect, which I said looks really great visually if the game supports HDR especially. And as for input lag, that is important also. It can kind of ruin an experience if it's really laggy. And I'm glad to say that there's basically no noticeable input lag at all. And believe me, I'm coming from like a 240 hertz monitor, so I would be very, very sensitive to any input lag. And I was actually surprised that it really is not noticeable at all. So if you're currently using a 60 hertz monitor, I think you'll be totally happy. And even if you're using a 120 hertz monitor, you'll probably be fine as well. Of course, being 60 hertz, if you're currently at 120 hertz or higher, then of course, only you are gonna be able to know whether or not you're willing to make the sacrifice to go back to 60 hertz in exchange for a much higher resolution, and you're just gonna have to decide that. But the input lag for a 60 hertz monitor is totally fine. So hopefully that covers everything you guys are wondering. If there's anything I missed, we can talk about that down in the comment section. I'll try to address anything major. If you did like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. And if you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those. And if you wanna subscribe, I make new videos two to three times a week, so it should be worth it. And also be sure to enable notifications by clicking the bell next to the subscribe button. So thanks again for watching, guys. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.